Hello scholars. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Miss Wattis and I teach at Monte Vista South. I miss all of you and I hope that everyone is doing well. Today I'm going to be talking to you about ancient Romans. And at the end of this lesson, I have a really fun activity in store for you that I think you're really going to enjoy. Now, when you think about the ancient Romans, what comes to mind? Here's some questions I want you to consider. What do you know about them? How did they live their everyday lives? And what are some activities that they might have been doing for fun? Today, we're going to be discussing some of the various forms of the ancient Romans' art. How do you think that they brought beauty and art into their daily lives? Consider, how do we bring beauty into our lives? I'm sure that many of you, just like me, have pieces of art all around your homes. Well, the ancient Romans borrowed many of their artistic techniques and styles from the cultures that preceded them, such as the Greek and Etruscan societies. Now, there's one particular art form that they are probably the best known for. Do you know what it is? If you said architecture, you're right. Roman architecture has always been considered some of the finest in the world's history. But they also practiced many other forms of art and design. And today, I'm going to show you some. The first kind that we're going to look at is glassware. Now, their glassware was thick and clunky. Not as thin as the glasses and plates that you might have in your kitchen today. That's because the Romans were still figuring out how to produce vessels made from glass. Much of their early glassware was made simply to be useful. I'm going to show you a few pictures. Here's one of some of their pottery. And you can tell how thick the handle is and really even up here you can see that there's a crack. But look how thick it still is. Well, as they learned the technique of glass blowing, their products became not only useful, but also beautiful. The next type of art that we're going to look at are jewels. Jewels are always beautiful pieces of art. The ancient Romans would carve semi-precious gems, such as amethyst, and make them into jewelry and other ornaments. And here is an example of some. Look how small and pretty this detail is with these beautiful red colors and gems. Can't you imagine the Romans walking around wearing jewelry that looked like this? Jewels are something that's not available for everyone to enjoy. But why do you think that is? Well, the material. Jewels are expensive. So who would be the only people in the Roman society who could afford such a unique and expensive form of art? The wealthy. What do you think about these? Would you like to wear a piece of jewelry that looked like this? You can let me know in the comments below, and I would love to hear what you have to say about these art pieces. Which ones are your favorite? Now, the last form of art that we're going to talk about today is metalwork. The Romans were able to produce iron ore from their own mines. Now, those mines were worked by slaves who worked in really terrible conditions. And once they received the iron, they discovered that they could reheat it to produce a strong metal sheet, together with the gold and silver, copper, and tin that they imported from the other nearby countries. They were able to produce many fine creations using clay molds that they had developed. Sometimes these metals were used for coins and tableware, like forks and knives and spoons, but often it was just to bring beauty into their lives. This work was much more detailed than the other forms of art that we've already looked at. And I'm going to show you some pictures, but I want you to really take note of the details you see. Here's some coins, and there's some people on them and the beveling that goes around the outside. Consider how these are tiny. Think about a quarter or a penny that we have in our wallets today, and imagine them being that size, but with this much detail. Now, go ahead and look around your home. Does anything in your home remind you of some of the ancient Roman artwork that you've seen today? If you want to share a picture of something in your house that's similar, go ahead and post it in the comments below. 
it would be fun for everyone to see what still looks like Roman society in our lives today. Which of these three forms of art was your favorite? I liked the jewels and the carved amethyst, but what were your favorites? You can also let me know that in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to make that project with me, I'm going to show you how to duplicate some Roman metalwork next. Here's an example of what your project might end up looking like. Here is a J, and if you can tell all the detail around here that I etched into the foil. Now I'm going to show you how to do this yourself. Here's the supplies that you're going to need to complete this project. You'll need some cardboard, some thick paper, such as cardstock or construction paper, or maybe even an old cereal or tissue box, tin foil, scissors, tape, and something dull that you can imprint the foil with. You'll see what that means in a minute. Now, you can pause the video now to go get those supplies, or you can just watch me do it and come back again later to complete the project with me. You might need to pause the video on an occasion in order to complete a step. If so, don't worry. Just press play again whenever you're ready for the next step. So the first thing that we're going to do is make a 6x6 six six piece of cardboard. Mine is already cut out, but you can go ahead and measure it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want a nice and even square. Now we want to make a design. You can do whatever you want. Maybe you choose to do a flower or a star or a diamond. I chose to do my initial, a J for Miss Wattis. I made sure that the size of my paper was smaller than my cardstock, and then I drew a design onto it. So here's the J that I drew. After I drew this and sketched it out, I went ahead and I cut it out and left me with this. Now that your design is drawn and cut out, you're going to want to glue this onto the cardstock like so. Now once you glue it, you may have to give it a few minutes to really get dry and set. The next thing you're going to do is to go ahead and take some foil like this and you're going to press it over the cardstock and your design. Now there's two sides to foil, the shinier side and a dull side. And you want to make sure that the shiny side is face up. I'm sorry if it gets a little loud for a second. The foil makes a lot of noise. Now, I've gone ahead and I've pressed it all and I've tucked it nice and even. Just like you might wrap a present for someone in your family or someone that you love and care about. And we're going to press down on this and really make sure that that design starts to show through. Now, it is a thick paper, so it's going to elevate the design a little bit. And it'll be a slightly raised level compared to everything else. Once you go through and really press this design, you can go ahead and take your dull pencil or your pen without a cap or maybe you even use a toothpick but you want to be careful in this step because foil is delicate and you might rip it but what you're going to do is go ahead and take your dull pen here and start to go around your design to really make sure that it pops just like this and once you can really see that design well, the next thing that you're going to do is draw whatever kind of design you want onto it. Now in the demo that I made before, you can tell that I used a kind of chevron pattern on it. But you can do whatever you want. Consider the metalwork that I showed you in the pictures before, during the lesson. What were some of the shapes in there? What were some of the designs that you saw? Now you're just making sure that you're not pressing too hard because like I said, you don't want to rip that foil. But you want to press hard enough that the design really comes through on the foil. And as you can see, you can already start to see the design coming out and see how my J is really elevated off of the rest of the foil. That's a 
about it for this, but if you have more supplies, you can go ahead and make as many as you like. Have fun with it, think about the designs that you saw, and be really creative. Now, I would love to see what you made. Go ahead and post them in the comments, and I want to see how creative you've been and how artistic you can be. Have fun with this project. I think it's a lot of fun, and I think you'll have some really fun art to show around your house.